My predecessor at this desk interviewed John McCain not just for this broadcast, but he spent hours one-on-one -on -one with candidate McCain as a reporter when he was on the Straight Talk Express back in 2000. Joining us now from Chicago is, of course, John Dickerson. John, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, I, I know you spent so Great to many- be with you, Margaret. You spent so many hours w with the senator. What was it like to be part of that campaign? Well, you know, the campaign was the message of the McCain presidency. He started out, as he said, so low in the polls that with the margin of error, he might actually have been in negative territory. <laughs> and he's, a, you know, he's famous and being lauded now. But back then, he was, he didn't have a shot. He was running against the establishment of his party. Uh, he was running against George W. Bush, who had all the money and all the endorsements. Uh, but what McCain basically said is, Washington is corrupt, there is too much money in Washington, and my campaign, by taking on the establishment, will show you what's possible in Washington, uh, where we can break down the fact that money has influence on all pieces of legislation. And it's kind of extraordinary to think back about that. He was in the Senate, and he was essentially saying that all of his colleagues were corrupt, and that he himself had been corrupted by money. The fact that he then was able to take that long shot campaign through was evidence that his message could work and was paying off with, with the voters. And as you say, and I know you've written about this, that the senator was upfront about his own flaws. It wasn't something he tried to hide. He was, and this was something that when, you know, in the, I don't know, millions of interviews I must have done with town hall, uh, people who went to his town halls, over 114 of them, I believe, uh, in New Hampshire in 2000, and then again, in, he did the same thing in 2008. Uh, he would be very frank about his failings. The Keating Five uh, being caught up in a campaign finance scandal um, was in part what motivated him to be so uh, ferocious about trying to get money out of politics. And his, this is why when, when people talk about his character and his discipline and his honor, it is a durable kind of, uh, of character. In other words, it has scuff marks. It has been out in the real world. It's not encased in some glass case uh, and unreal. He failed a lot. He talked about his failures. Uh, he beat him, himself up about his failures. And even when he was off course, he was often trying to get back on course, uh, which is why so many people looked at his life on the campaign trail and thought this is a model for the way politicians should behave, but also the way we should behave. And reporters spend so many hours with candidates, as I know you did, some of them off the record. I, I know you've said that you sometimes had to sort of guide the senator to go off the record because he was so uh, colorful in some of his storytelling. Well, you know, one of the things, uh, and, and, his, and his candor got himself into, tr got him in trouble in 2000, some of the days you'd be in conversation with him over nine hours. Um, and so that he would, this was of course in the pre sort of internet, everything is covered every second kind of way. And for, in the service of trying to make a larger point, he would sometimes shorthand things uh, in ways that wouldn't make, that wouldn't look good if you spliced the comment. Um, but you know, what, what got through to voters when they saw him, uh, curious about this person, he was a celebrity candidate, a celebrity candidate not since Ronald Reagan that we'd seen in 2000, but it was celebrity that had behind it this durable thing. And the thing that was durable is what had sustained him for five and a half years in a dark box. It wasn't just running on his gaudy name, he was running on a set of values and when he talked about it, he talked about the people he'd served with. He talked about the connection of their duty, honor, and service in very difficult times and connected it to real life Americans at the moment. And then he said this to his audience. He said, there are still great causes. Whenever there's a person who's poor, that's a great cause. Whenever there's an old person who lacks uh, insurance or lacks hope, that is a great cause. And he was trying basically to make this transaction to say the things that allowed me to get through those five and a half years of torture and giving up uh, the right to be released early, what got me through that can still sustain you now. And that's what made people stand up and applaud for those ideas, even if they disagreed with him, which they often did in those uh, town halls. And yet at the end of his career, uh, he, he was still a maverick, uh, going toe to toe sometimes with President Trump, the head of his own party. Do you see any voice out there like McCain's right now who's willing to take the chances you described? 
in the conversations I've had uh, since his passing, there are a lot of Republicans, a lot of people who think that this is not just the dying of a Senate icon, but the dying of a set of principles. But I think McCain, McCain would argue against that. Uh, and you argue we should just note the way he used to sometimes go after this legislation was the way he used to box at the Naval Academy. They would said he would just run into the middle of the ring and start throwing punches. <laughs> uh, and he, uh, you know, sometimes that worked and sometimes he got knocked on his behind. But the always getting up is the key thing in McCain. But in terms of whether that still exists, I think his argument would be all he did was plug his life into a set of American values that have been with the country since its founding. The idea of self-sacrifice. When he got out of prison, he didn't talk about his great deeds. He talked about the deeds of all around him. Not taking credit for yourself, recognizing the dignity in other people, recognizing even if somebody is in another party, they're still human beings. All of those things are available to all Americans. And while John McCain had a life trying to follow those and sometimes falling them short, everybody can plug into that. That would be his message. So while there may not be one person, I think his argument would be there are a whole nation full of people who have all of those same qualities that they can grab hold of and live a life that might measure up at the end of it the way people are saying John McCain's did. The better angels still live. Thank you very much, John Dickerson. We will be right back to hear Thanks, more Martin. from some journalists who also knew and covered John McCain throughout his Senate career. <laughs>